Martin, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're on the first day of the talks here in Durban. What's your take on the negotiations so far? I think it has taken off and uh, now all the action has to really begin and there are many, many issues that have to be unraveled. One of them is on the fund, you know, because in Cancun it was agreed to establish a fund and then it's taken them one year to design it and we do have a report uh, but it doesn't enjoy consensus of the working group that, uh, that, that designed this fund. So I think one of the issues here is whether uh, they can eventually find an agreement on the way the fund should be governed and uh, how the fund should use its money because there's still a lot of uh, uh, you know, debate uh, in it and if it opens up here for discussion then there will be a lot of intense uh, discussion which is what, what is normal. Uh, at the end of it I hope that uh, they will come to an early agreement so that this is one big thing that, that uh, you know this, this conference can do but what I'm a bit worried is that the United States which was uh, the main party that did not approve the report uh, may only agree to this fund and the way it runs, uh, if it gets what it wants in other areas, this is what people are speculating, that it wants certain things here and it will not agree to this until it gets that. So I don't think the fund should be used as a bargaining chip or as a matter of leveraging. We should just settle this, it was already agreed, let's get it going, you know. Um, this climate fund, of course, is going to be used to help some of the poorest countries in the world adapt to the impacts of climate change. What are the implications of it not being agreed here? Well, I think uh, if it is not agreed, I mean, it, it has already been agreed that we will have this fund. Now the thing is to get it going. If it doesn't get going, then I think it will send a very de depressing note on everything else, especially we are in Africa. The fund is meant to help countries uh, to adapt, you know, and I think that is the most important task, if you ask me, in climate change now. So many countries are being flooded, uh, droughts, uh, rainfall and so on. But uh, one worrying proposal within that group, which was really the proposal of the developed countries, is that bes besides giving money to developing countries, the fund will also give money to corporations, to companies, to the private sector, including the international private sector. So the developing countries had been arguing against it. They said, look, leave it to the developing countries. If you give the funds to us in our proposals on using the fund, it could also be that we are going to spur our private sector to be more green. For example, subsidies to companies to use renewable energy or subsidies to consumers to drive a green motor car, as, as you do in the United Kingdom. So that in that way, we are going to use it for the private sector or the consumer as well. But the developed countries want the option that this fund is used to provide money to the to their companies, and that, that and that this will leverage private finance. And they actually use uh, terms like loan guarantees and joint equity. So this uh, may divert funds away from developing countries into the private companies. Is the argument from rich countries not that they need to try and leverage private money in order to, to achieve the kinds of levels of funding we're talking about and that public funding alone simply cannot, cannot achieve the, the, the sufficient amounts of money? Yeah, you see the developed countries themselves are already using their funds to leverage, okay, to, to leverage their companies. Uh, and sometimes it has not worked very well. Look at the United States, they, they gave a loan guarantee of $500 million to a solar energy company that has gone bankrupt. So the US government has lost $500 million, okay? So do we want to transfer this kind of risks into a green climate fund that is meant to help developing countries? And this fund is not meant to help companies, you know, to provide guarantees for them or to have joint equity and so on. Uh, there are already institutions that do that. I mean, you have the World Bank, you have the International Finance Corporation, you have the German government that does it, you have the US government that does it, including to subsidize companies to go to developing countries. The scarce resources of these funds should go directly to the developing countries. If those developing countries want 
to use funds to attract foreign capital to come in, then they can put forward a proposal for the uh, for the Green Climate Fund board to decide on. But the Green Climate Fund itself should not be autonomously giving funds to international private finance. You know. And so just to, to finish up, what's the kind of optimal outcome at the end of these two weeks with regards to the Green Climate Fund? What, what do we hope to achieve here? Well, if we get the governance right, if we, uh, if we also place a lot of safeguards so that uh, the, funds, the fund does not get involved in risky financialization activities, uh, and then if there is goodwill, especially from uh, the United States, this is not used as a bargaining chip, then a report of this fund and its governing uh, instrument will be adopted by the conference of parties and that will be a very big uh, step forward. The second issue is whether countries will then begin to start pledging so that by the end of Durban we we'll say well it already has 10 billion or it has 2 billion or it has 20 billion uh, to start moving you know in its first year. And are you optimistic that's going to happen? I think the chances are 50-50, you know, so I suppose that's optimism. 50-50 <laughs> is quite good nowadays. Yeah. Everything to play for then. Martin, thank you very much for joining us and we'll catch up with you later in the week.